Electrical circuits are born to the society. We have learned so many electrical circuits involving resistances, inductors, capacitors, voltage sources, dependent sources, independent sources, etc. In this particular video, we will be discussing only linear and bilateral electrical circuits, which are basically the circuits which involve the voltage sources and the resistances. The thing with these kind of circuits is that if there is a variable resistor and if you want to do calculations on that variable resistor, for example, calculating current across the resistor or finding the voltage across the resistor, you have to repeat the calculations for every changed value of that variable resistor. With the Thevenin's theorem, you have the advantage of doing the calculations only once and then even if the value of variable resistance changes, you have a simplified function which relates the changed value of the resistance and current and the voltage across that particular changed resistor. So welcome to this new video which is on Thevenin's theorem. My name is Devashish and this is an Ed Sharpner production. We will not be discussing the actual statement of the Thevenin's theorem because it is widely available on the internet. Let's first discuss how we can go about designing the Thevenin circuit. So we'll be discussing the example in the video and if you stick to the video till the end, we'll have a word of the day and you will learn something even new. So let's jump in. If you as a viewer of Ed Sharpner haven't yet got the chance to subscribe to the channel, please go to the red subscribe button and click subscribe. And if you would like to receive all the notifications of the videos that we put, click the bell icon and select all. Thank you. So this is basically a complex circuit that you see on the left. Now the complex circuit involves a lot of resistors, a lot of voltage sources and they're connected in complex manner. But every such a circuit involving voltage sources and the resistors, doesn't matter if they are dependent sources or independent sources, but every such a circuit can be converted into a circuit only involving one voltage source, as you can see on the right, which is VTH or Popularly, it is also known as Thevenin's voltage, okay, and it also involves the RTH and RTH is known as Thevenin's resistor. So in a nutshell, every complex circuit can be converted into a simplified circuit involving VTH, its internal resistance RTH and the load resistance with which we are working. And once you simplify the circuit, you have the function relating IL with the RTH and RL and VTH. So you don't have to worry about the changed value of RL. You just have to put the new value and you will get the new value of IL. If that's clear, we can jump into the example and see how we can actually design a Thevenin circuit for the existing problem. All right. So this is the problem that you see on the top. And in that particular problem, we have terminals A and B shown for RL. The value for RL is not very important right now and we have not considered any value for that because the very first step that involves in designing the Thevenin circuit is removing that RL altogether, as you can see at the bottom. Now, the first thing that we need to find is finding VTH. In the next slide, we'll see how to find VTH. Finding VTH involves superposition in some cases. And in this particular example, the superposition is the best way we can find our VAB or VTH. Remember, only superposition is not the way to find out VAV or VTH in every case. You do not have to apply superposition. You can apply KVL, KCL and apply other theorems in circuit theory to find out VAV. But particularly in this example, because we have voltage sources and current sources, it's preferable that we use superposition theorem. So for the first two figures, we are just considering the voltage sources and we have cut out the current source from the left and then we do not have any current source on the right hand figure for the top. And our objective is to find out VAB in the first case. And in the next figure, we have cut short, that means shorted the voltage sources and just kept the current source in the second diagram. We'll be analyzing VAB, which we'll call, let's call it VAB1 and that will be due to voltage sources. And for the bottom diagram, let's say, we are going to find VAB2, the voltage across AB when only the current source is acting and we'll be adding them together VAB1 plus VAB2, which will eventually give me VTH. All right. In the next slide, we'll see how to find out VAB1 and VAB2. Let's see how we can find out VAB1. It's easy to see that this left hand circuit has decomposed itself into such a circuit. So we have 10 volt. Then we have 6 ohm resistor, 
let me draw the a and b terminals there so it will be easy for us to understand what is going on 12 volt plus minus and the 12 ohm resistor remember that i have ignored this resistor completely since there is a open circuit over there and now i am in a position to find out vab so in this particular circuit we have two voltage sources 12 volt and the 10 volt since their polarities are different we are just doing 12 volt minus 10 volt and the effective voltage in the circuit will be 2 volts also the total resistance of the circuit is of course 6 ohm plus 12 ohm which is 18 ohms and we can find out the current through the circuit which will be flowing in counterclockwise direction since the 12 volt battery is more effective than the 10 volt battery so the current will be forced by the 12 volt battery the current in this case would be 2 volts divided by 18 ohms and that would give me 1 over 9 amperes since i know the current flowing through this circuit i am in a position to apply the kvl now let's see how we can apply the kvl in order to apply the kvl let's look at the loop on the left we know that the voltage across ab is equal to the voltage across 6 ohms plus 10 volts so i can write vab is equal to i that i just calculated times 6 ohms plus 10 volts the i that i calculated is 1 over 9 amperes so i can write vab is equal to 1 over 9 times 6 plus 10 which gives me vab is equal to 32 over 3 volts for the next circuit we have 5 ampere current source acting there are two resistances that the current sees let me simplify the diagram a bit here so this is the current 5 ampere coming in and it sees two resistors 6 ohms and 12 ohms remember wherever the resistance is more the current will be less so i can apply the current division which says that if i need to find out the current from if i need to find the current through 12 ohms i put 12 plus 6 in the denominator and in the numerator i put the opposite resistor which is 6 ohms then i multiply it with the total current coming in that gives me the current through 12 ohm resistor and which is 5 by 3 amperes i know now what is the current passing through 12 ohm resistor that means i'll know the voltage drop across 12 ohm resistor that would be 5 by 3 amperes times 12 ohms and that gives me 20 volts the same voltage would be across vab since vab and the voltage of 12 ohms are in parallel so i hope you understand why vab2 would be 20 volts i remember that vab1 was 32 over 3 volts and vab2 is equal to 20 volts and now let me add these together to find out dvth which is the needed voltage after the superposition so vth is equal to vab1 plus vab2 and that gives me 32 over 3 plus 20 which is 92 over 3 volts so since we have vth now we are in a position to find out rth in the next slide we will see how to find out the rth to find out rth the very first thing that you do is you short all the voltage sources and you open circuit all the current sources all right if you do that you will see that there should be a short in place of 10 volt battery there should be a short in place of 12 volt battery and there is an open circuit in the place of 5 ampere current source if you do that the next step is to look through this ab so this is an i pardon me for my drawing here so i have drawn an i and i am looking through ab terminals and i am interested in finding out the equivalent resistance through that particular terminal side if i simplify that i can see that 6 ohm and 12 ohm resistors are connected in parallel across ab so which makes it very very simple do not worry about 4 ohms since no current is flowing through that so i can simply ignore that particular resistor so looking through ab i see that 12 and 6 ohms are in parallel if i apply the formula for applying equivalent resistance when i have two parallel resistors i can say that r equivalent should be equal to 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12 if you simplify that you get r equivalent equals to 4 ohms now we are in a position to design our final theremin circuit
to draw the Thevenin circuit, I need the VTH, which I have already found. So that is VTH. Then I have the RTH, which I just found out. Then I have my RL. Let me just put the labeling. VTH is equal to 92 over 3 volts and RTH is, RTH is equal to 4 ohms. Simply, if I need to find out the current through this RL and if let's say RL is equal to 2 ohms, how can I find it out? Simply, IL would be equal to VTH which is 92 over 3 divided by 4 ohms plus 2 ohms. That just gives me 92 over 18 amperes. So you don't have to worry about computing all the circuit again and again if you change RL. You can just put the value of RL in the formula and find out the load current or maybe the voltage across RL just by putting out the value of RL. So this is it for Thevenin circuit. We have learned how to design the Thevenin circuit not by looking at the theorem itself but by actually going through the example and finding out VTH and RTH individually and then applying the formula we can find out the load current flowing through the load resistor. If you are liking the videos on 8 chapter, please give thumbs up and please, please subscribe to the channel because more of the content is coming in. Also, please let us know in the comments what would you like to learn and put all the topics that you are feeling in or probably not doing well and we'll be happy to help you. Share this video as much as possible since this is a very, very sensitive topic. I personally failed in this subject when I was in my first year of engineering. I'm sure that if you keep learning, you'll reach your goals. As I said, the word of the day is waiting for you. And the word of the day is facsimile, which is basically a noun also used as a verb and actually means an exact copy or duplicate replica, especially of a document or a manuscript. I hope that this video was not actually a facsimile of your original knowledge. And I hope it was helpful for you and we'll see you soon with another video. Thank you so much.